It's the grand finals of the most anticipated OSU tournament of the year. The match is tied and both sides must play the tiebreaker to decide it all. The winner is crowned champion. The loser is forever found on the wrong side of history. Very rarely does this dream situation arise, but when it does, it will always result in a match that will forever be remembered. On July 9th, 2023, it was this exact scenario that unraveled in front of our eyes for the second year in a row at the round table. The two best tournament players in the world were facing off, and the stakes couldn't be clearer. One is looking to redeem themselves after being on the losing end of the situation last year, and the other is trying to add yet another victory to his already historic tournament resume. Last year's fairy tale ending was unraveling its magic once again, but what's perhaps even crazier is that this only happened because of a comeback we will likely never see ever again, and it might have been thanks to just one single water bottle. The Roundtable 2 took the Osu community to new heights and further expanded on their never-before-seen land invitational format that makes this tournament so special. Last year, the Roundtable's inception broke new ground for what the Osu community was capable of and provided one of the best tournament experiences witnessed in the game's history. In that time, this beloved tournament series only continued to grow. 16 of the world's best players from 7 different countries were invited and flown out to Los Angeles to compete in this once-in-a-lifetime type setting. The players that were competing in this year's rendition of the Roundtable arguably boasted even more talent than in the tournament's debut, and it was no secret that every single match mattered that much more to everyone there. However, amidst the loaded competition, there were two standalone favorites that were expected to make a deep run in the tournament, Emrek and Malashevsky. Emrek needs no introduction. For the past two years, Emrek has held the number one spot on the OSU rankings and is single-handedly pushing his skills to a level no one comes even close to replicating. Emrek previously competed in the round table's debut and went on a nice run. However, he ultimately fell to Otami in the grand finals in tiebreaker fashion to take second place in the tournament. Now he has made his return, and he is looking to take the crown that slipped through his fingertips in the year prior. The other player everyone expected to do exceptionally well was Malashevsky. A wide majority has considered him to be the absolute best tournament player in the world, and that's for good reason. With four rows of badges to his name and more along the way, he's on a fast track to becoming the most decorated OSU player of all time, a status no one thought would be rival. Until now, that is. These two have single-handedly redefined OSU history in their own ways and built legacies that will forever be remembered. Emrek is looking to solidify himself as the greatest OSU player of all time, and Malashevsky, the greatest tournament player of all time. Two positions that seemed impossible for anyone to chase until these two burst onto the scene. But that's not to say that their legacies don't overlap, because these two have a rich history between each other. On numerous occasions, it was these two that were facing off at some of the biggest OSU tournaments in the game. Every single tournament that these two entered, their expected to come out on top, and it seems like the only way for them to be defeated is if they end up beating each other. The round table 2 was no different, and this tournament was primed for these two to face off in historic fashion. The same thought loomed across everyone's mind. How would this chapter of the rivalry play out this time? As both players arrived in LA, there was only one way to find out the answer to this question. The weekend of the round table 2 was upon us, and after some laughs, scuffed moments, and a crazy battle royale, it was finally time for the main tournament to be played. Through all the pressure and intensity given to everyone involved, the community at large was waiting for what felt inevitable, a match between Emrek and Malashevsky. Both players were on opposite ends of the bracket, with Emrek entering as the first seed and Malashevsky the third seed, which set them up for matches towards the final stages of the tournament. But in order to get to that point, both players must step up to the occasion and beat everyone they face on this grand stage. And if you are familiar with both of their games, the result was a foregone conclusion. Both players would completely tear through each and every one of their opponents in dominating fashion. Through both of their first three matches, Emrek and Malashevsky had a combined map record of an incredible 30 and 2. Both players had lost only one map each, and were set to play each other in the winner's bracket finals. With a spot in the grand finals on the line, the OSU community finally got the match they wanted to see. Everyone expected this match to be close and intense, but Emrek looked absolutely unstoppable. He got out to a hot start and won the first four maps of the match to put him up 4-0, and from there it was smooth sailing as he would eventually close out the match 7-3. Now he was one match win away from being crowned the Round Table 2 champion, which will certainly be the case if he keeps on playing like this. But beneath this defeat, there was something that was secretly keeping Malashevsky in the running, and it was more than just his skill. While entering the loser's bracket sounds bad on all fronts because you are now one loss away from elimination and you have to win more matches just to make it deeper into the tournament, there is something that doesn't get talked about too often. An underrated perk is that if you're sitting in the loser's bracket grand finals and win that match, you enter the grand finals with extra experience on the grand finals map pool. For instance, at the 2022 OSU World Cup, the United States found themselves against Germany in the loser's bracket grand finals. They would win this match 7-1, but more importantly, they were able to familiarize themselves with the map pool. 
They were set to play against South Korea the next day, who did not play on this map pool in a match yet. This experience advantage proved to be vital, as the US would take two matches in a row 7-1 and 7-4 respectively to win the 2022 OSA World Cup, their fifth title in a row. Oftentimes, things like this go under the radar, but sometimes small things like this do have a tangible effect on the outcome of OSU tournaments. This was exemplified by the format of the round table since the tournament has to be played to completion on the same day. If Malashevsky could win his match against Zudinator, he would earn his run back against Emrek, gain the extra map pool experience, and even have a fresh warm up on the map pool within a tournament setting. And that's exactly what he did as he would take down Zudi with a swift 7 2 victory, setting the stage for a grand final that will forever go down in Ozu history. As both players sat down on opposite ends of the not round but rectangular table, everyone gathered around to watch history unfold in front of their very eyes. The match started with Emmerich to pick first. He had the advantage of being in the winner's bracket, where he needed to beat Malashevsky just one more time to win it all, whereas Malashevsky had to win two matches in a row to take the crown. A close opening break point would give Malashevsky a 1-0 lead, but Emmerich would steal it right back with a decisive break point of his own to tie the match 1-1. This started out more competitive than their previous matchup, but whether it's fatigue, the pressure or their sneaky loser's bracket advantage that I mentioned earlier, the outcome of their matchup in the winner's bracket finals was completely turned on its head. Malashevsky would seize three break points on Emmerich's first four picks and got out to a quick 6-2 lead to kick off the grand finals. The momentum of this tournament completely lied on Malashevsky's shoulders. Out of the 17 maps he played in the grand finals up to this point, he won 13 of them, and it looked like he wasn't stopping anytime soon. Emmerich needed to take a step back and look for any semblance of containing Malashevsky's hot streak. He took a sip of water and took some time to collect himself. Everyone knew that Emrek wasn't going down without a fight, but little did anyone know that this water bottle would give Emrek a tiny spark, and against the odds, he began to do what everyone thought was impossible. Emrek won his next pick to cut the lead to 6-3, but now came the hard part. He had to overcome Malashevsky's double breakpoint advantage to find a way back into the match. A bracket reset was on everyone's mind, but Emrek was poised for a comeback. An Emrek breakpoint on hidden 3 would bring things to 6-4, and Emrek would capitalize on his final pick of the match, and all of a sudden, the lead only stood at 6-5. Malashevsky still had his final pick to shut everything down and reset the bracket, and as the map played out, it seemed like he would put an end to things right here. He had a massive close Closing combo. He just needed to hold on. He's able to hold and oh my, my god! god. They both hit the countdown 3, 2, 1 jumps. They both hit the split streams. They both hit the space patterns. Malashevsky finally looking a little more comfortable in a way that he hasn't for the last few maps that Emrek has won. Malashevsky starting to establish just that little bit of a lead that is all it takes if you want to close out this match in the first set and go to that reset for him. We're into the last hard part of the map, the last big one second, the last Point. Oh no! The fourth point breaker! Emrek has to hold! He, he has to oh, oh my, my god! god. He hits the foot stays as well afterwards. The score leads back on the red side. And Emrek suddenly, with those misses from Malashevsky, may just bring us to the one and only grand final tiebreaker. This is outrageous. We've had clutch performances, but I don't think we've had anything quite like winning four maps in a row from 6-2 down to force the only tiebreaker that we will have seen this entire your tournament, but when your name is Emrek, you get to the Grand Finals, you pull off an outrageous comeback, and we are gonna see, at long last, a tiebreaker here at the Round Table 2. But of course, the script had to play to perfection. Emrek won four maps in a row to force a tiebreaker in the Grand Finals. Throughout this entire tournament, there was not a single tiebreaker that had been played in any match. This was the only one, and if the Round Table 2 had to have only one tiebreaker across the entire weekend, you bet that everyone wanted it in the Grand Finals. Getting to this point seemed almost impossible, but there was only one map left to decide the outcome of this Grand Final. Was there a bracket reset inbound, or will Emrek complete the comeback that everyone thought was impossible? The map started, and let me tell you, that water bottle from earlier might have had some pixie dust in it. Pretty big combo because Lord knows Emrek is going to- Oh, and oh, oh you can tell just looking at it that this is pre-low for Emrek. Three score advantage climbing up towards that 100k mark. Oh, and no. And that Mr. Malachi no, made it no. with every metric has Emrek coming up on top in this map at the moment. There is still the hardest part of this map. There has never been a bottle of water quite so important in a tournament in this game. And that was where the tables turned. And he is on the verge of clutching up and pulling off what I have to think is one of the biggest comebacks we'll have ever seen in a grand final. Emrek is just proving himself oh. that he is the GOAT. Yeah, the kid just keeps doing it. This section full of 
attack the space stream, slider stream, hitting it no problem. The spacing changes and cut streams and buzz sliders all over the place. The stack stream it's a break. misses on the slider it's stream. 200 a combo for M. Malashevsky, but it does not matter. It's like you said, Aaron, 200,000 score into the death streams at the end of the M map for MREC. And 200,000 score ahead of Malashevsky almost by the end of the map and 170k to decide the winner of the round table. It is MREC, the number one player in the world and the number one player in Los Angeles at the round table. That, that. <laughs> what an incredible performance. MREC won the last five maps in a row to win the match seven to six and became the round table two champion. He was down two to six and still made this happen. He avenged his previous tiebreaker defeat in the grand finals of the round table and overcame the odds. He made possibly the greatest comeback in Osu history, and this water bottle marked the start of his historic comeback. According to Dio, everyone at the tournament collectively went through 11 40 pack cases of water. 440 water bottles were consumed, but none were more important than this one. There was not a single person in the room or in Twitch chat that foresaw something like this. No one except Emrek himself. Emrek, I, I, I just have a single question, dude. How the f*** did you do that? What did you expect? <laughs> In every competition, if you take away all the intricacies of the game being played, it's pretty simple. At the end of it all, there was a winner and a loser. And to most, that's all that seems to matter. But this match proved that if everyone spreads warm feelings and positivity to everyone, then no one truly loses. And if wholesome memories are made and everyone can feel the love between these two players, those in the room, and everyone watching from home, then it's safe to say that even in historic matches like these, everyone wins. Because there is absolutely nothing that could take away moments like these from anyone. And the respect between these two amazing competitors is obvious the two best tourney players in the scene and I don't think you can make much argument.